Hello, my name is Dr. Maya Byfield. Uh, my business is The Phenomenal Stemist. I'm so excited to be here in Orange County because it's where I live. I live in Apopka, Florida. And I decided to make this business because I saw a need for underrepresented students to be successful in STEM, which stands for science, technology, engineering, math. And the best way I can do that is just provide products for parents to prepare them, uh, whether it's a book or online STEM camps or just video podcasting. My goal is to transform this community, especially those who are underrepresented. And the way to do that is to help parents understand their children's minds and basically develop them at different stages of their lives to be prepared for a successful STEM career. Thank you so much. That's why I'm here. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello, everybody. It's the phenomenal stemist, Dr. Maya Bifel, along with the master, Dr. Ken Stewart. And we're all about the theme all quarter long. It's the final month of the quarter. Health is wealth. How are you doing, Ken? I'm good. A little under the weather, but I hope so to um, provide some insight and to, and, and to jump on. I'm glad I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Good, good, good. Before we do that, I want to always do my little homework right now. My homework is please, please do me a favor. Let this be a stocking stuffer. Pick up the book. Phenomenal Stemis is on Amazon now. Get this for all your nieces, your nephews, your grandkids. All right. Good, good, good. And don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube page, please. I would really, really appreciate it. All right. Let's see who's in the house. Let's see. I see a couple people watching. Hey, of course, number one supporter, number one fan, my mother, hey. fresh off the cruise ship. She was cruising for about a month. No, nah, I'm sorry. Not a month. It felt, it felt like a month. <laughs> It was only seven days, but it felt like a month, mommy. I'm glad you're home. Glad yeah. you're home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good evening, mother. How are you? We're going to get right into it. We have to talk about the final three. Not, what do you call it? Power nine. Correct. Final three the, power nines. The fire, final three of the power nine, which has to do with longevity being a part of the blue zone longevity mm -hmm. living a long life we said from the get-go when, when we started health as well that one of the major f problems with um in the african-american community in terms of wealth distribution is the fact that we die too early and then we're not able to maximize our earning years um and utilize the the capacity of all that wealth over time. So health is wealth. So we have the last three, the last three of the power nine to, to help with our longevity. What are the final three, Ken? One is joining the right tribe. Mm. Joining the right tribe. You want, us to, you want me to list all three or one at a time? You could do six through nine, yeah. Or whatever. whatever all right. Yeah. So joining the right tribe, belonging belonging to a faith-based community, and last but not least, putting loved ones first. Wow. It seems like it's all about relationships. Longevity, well, longevity has to do with relationships. Okay. So start with the first one. So joining the right tribe looks at 
creating social circles that support healthy behaviors. So let, let me say this. I know when we are born, when we are kids, um, females um, or little girls would gravitate together, um, get nurtured a little bit. Hey, come on, let's get up. You know, you're hurt. And then for, for, for girls, play dates here, go this here, playing with dolls here. So I think for girls, that is kind of embedded in some respects. Yeah. So it's easier for girls or females to kind of gravitate and join the right tribe because they have a lot of options because they've been practicing. Yeah. However, for the boys now, it's a little different for the boys. Boys is, all right, get up. You don't, you know, behave yourself. It's not more coddling. It's more or less get up, um, focus on what you got to do. Guys or boys play, but not as much as the girls. And when they do, it's competitive. Um, so it's a lot of energy spent on on adrenaline and not necessarily yes. nurturing. Yes. So um, as we get older, for, um, for continue with that, creating that tribe of your own, whether, whether if it's from work or other avenues and create that fit for you. And then for guys, you know, and a lot of, and I know guys for the most part are loners in some respects because they, they yeah. don't want to feel vulnerable. Yeah. So I would recommend, Hey, connect with the crew, connect with somebody, um, at, at church, which jumps into the next one, but I'm not going to go there as yet, but connect, connect, connect with a group or even a business group to be able to share ideas, learn. But the main thing is joining the right tribe, which will help you help your quality of life because we know that men or women live longer than men overall. And it could be because of the tribe. Could be because of the tribe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The tribe mentality, you know, we call it the, the, the pride, you know, like lioness, you know, yeah. he, female humans are a lot like uh, female lions, the lioness. And um, in which they gather together as females, all of them gather it and they and and they rear children together. Um, they literally mm-hmm. very few animals do this, but the lioness and the female does it. Um, you see it in colleges all the time. When we, were, we were just talking about the fact that we both went to Oakwood and which is a HBCU in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, and. Our sweet mates, we would our our cycles will align with each other. Our menstrual cycles, like mm-hmm. you could have somebody over here, over here, in a totally different cycle, and then when you live together for a short amount of time, the menstrual cycle actually aligned with the females you were living with, and 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 lioness prides do that as well. It's literally so that you can actually raise children together. It's so it's it's the the, the tribe is critical. Yep. A good tribe will will have your spirits uplifted. A bad tribe will have you depressed. A good tribe will 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 keep you accountable. A bad tribe will have you cheating on your wife and and getting venereal diseases and dying early. You know, it, it yeah. matters. The tribe matters. Yeah, yeah, tribe matters. And 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 what you said about um um you 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 were living at Oakwood. You were. You you were living in a in a in, a, um, in the dorm and the, and the, all the other females had their had their cycles at the same time. That's due to you know and, and you can share more about that. But but that's due to your your body releasing certain chemicals due to the fact that you may be happy. Due due to the fact that you are supported. Due to the fact that you are welcome then. So your guards are down. You're not as stressed. So that can be potential one reason why you know why you feel. Um, good ab- about that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. Very important. Okay. Next one. Belonging to a faith based community. Um, mm, that's what we see in a lot attend- of blue zones. Yes. Attending faith based com- services add years to your life. Um, I often tell people whenever we go to church, it's and, and you may know this to um, Dr. Byfield. Whenever you go to church, there is some sense of similar to going to a therapist in a sense that you're going, you are 
expressing yourself. You are, there's some form of dialogue and then you're leaving whatever stressor you may be having, whether if it's altar call or what have you, and then you're coming back, refresh, or um, knowing that, hey, I've, I've left whatever I, I was dealing with at the altar, now I am free. Because, you know, for those who go to church, when we go to altar call, we are, we the goal is to, or our faith is helping us to uh, release whatever tension we may be having, and then, and, and, and then you feel alleviated. You feel like, okay, God is on you. So, so I think belong to a faith-based community because that helps to alleviate our stress. That helps to extend our years of life. You know, I was talking to one of my friends. Um, she's a, a licensed physical, um, licensed uh, therapist. Uh, shout out to Shauna K. Denham. And um, she said that there's something called music therapy where you... <laughs> stand and you raise your hands. I'm like, that sounds like church. She said, it is, it is. And she said, what we need to do more often is we need to incorporate, we need to somehow um, not incorporate because we already do it. We need to let the, 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 the psychotherapy space needs to let churches know the behaviors that they do, which enhance mental health. Correct. Yeah. It, it, it bring an awareness to these things, you know? Um, Hey, yeah. Dwayne, Dwayne is in the house. He's <laughs> what's going on, brother. <laughs> what? Good to see. Yeah. So it's like, there are many things that we do in churches that literally are therapeutic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot yeah. of us trying to say, you know, you need to go to therapy. Therapy is important. Yes. You know, we say Jesus and therapy. But I, I want us to understand that it's not even just Jesus and therapy. It is Jesus, church, and therapy. Like, coming to church, is it has therapeutic, very important therapeutic, um, I can't think of the word, but it's very therapeutic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you probably looking for the word therapeutic interventions, the yeah. therapeutic modalities that yeah. have been studied, um, um, because it helps to alleviate the body connects with our heart, which connects with our I'm sorry, our mind connects to our heart, which connects to our body. So whenever we yeah. go to church, it's it's a it's a spiritual but emotional it experience. It is. And the center of our emotions is the heart and, and it's our body and our heart, which impacts our mind and therefore then behavior. I've been like really like delving in this and the critical is, it's not just getting a religion. Like it's literally going to the building, Mm. right? Because a lot of us not only need emotional and spiritual health, we need to be touched. Yeah. Like some people don't get a hug until Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. And the physical touch is also releasing certain types of chemicals in our body, healthy chemicals in our body. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah that, yeah, that 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 touch is powerful. Yeah. So so now, which leads me to the whole COVID thing. You know, there were no churches open, right. so people were stressed. Yeah. Families were stressed to the breaking point because there was no outlet. Yeah, yeah. it mattered. Yeah. It mattered. It mattered. Yeah. I mean, I feel like people are just coming from from the fog of COVID, just coming from under the fog of COVID. Yeah. And churches are open. So and but unfortunately, churches aren't as packed as they used to be because many people feel that they don't need it. They could just watch Mm -hmm. it online and you may get some benefits of it, but not the maximum. Um, You got to find a community. It's not just watching it. It's something about community, right? What 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 was the rule again? Find a faith based community, not just um, not just going to church, not not just watching church online. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. It's, it, it, it incorporates belonging. It's the belonging part. Belonging is a critical piece to our mental health and therefore our physical stability. Yeah. Yes, yeah. which helps us live live long. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes. Um, and then the last one is putting loved ones first. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is keeping aging parents and grandparents nearby or in the home. That that's very important because you can learn from them. You can help take care of them. They can um, impart knowledge to you um, by just being close by. Mm -hmm. That helps you also reduce your risk of dying early. Wow. Having your parents or your loved ones near you can... Live, make yes. you live longer, yes. not necessarily your parents live longer, but also you live longer. Well, both, both, both goes hand in hand. Oh wow! Why, both. why is it that I live longer if I have? Shout out to my mother; she lives fifteen minutes away. Don't talk, yes. don't talk too long, because then she's gonna move into the house. She's gonna be like, "I see, I want to move in because it's closer." <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's so funny. But I live fifteen away, fifteen minutes away from my that's mother, good. and that's um. Good. So I'm close. Uh, why is that going to make me live longer? Other because, than the fact that she right, gives me, so, she feeds me. Like I had curry chicken, white rice today and some spinach. Like she actually, I, I eat better when she's around. <laughs> you see? Yeah. So, that, so, that's, so that's one thing from your perspective. Now, from my perspective, my parents were in New York. So, so being the oldest, stress. I'm all the way over here. They're mm. over there. How do I navigate things? Are you paying your bills? Are you, you know, oh, you have a doctor's appointment? Who's taking you? Who's picking you up? It's cold. So, which goes back to stress, which goes back to potential, you know, Worry. stress, thus cancer, thus death, be because of the whole concept of they're not close to me. However, if they were close to me, no problem. 50 minutes from you. Okay, what's what's going on? Okay, let me come over and, and take you to the doctor. Let me come over and take you to the ER. Uh, or you want some food? Let me bring some food to you. Uh, or you want to come to church with me? I, 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 I'll come and pick you up. Um, or better yet, hey, you have grandkids? Okay, go pick up the grandkids. So right. that whole connection is strengthened every day, yeah. every day because yeah. you're so close. Yeah, that it's critical. Yeah. It, having family around. Um, what I'm hearing to today is that relationships matter. Relationships yeah. keep yeah. you alive. Marriage, um, family, uh, church family, social friends, tribe. Yeah. It is critical that we are not alone and stressed. That's what I'm yeah. hearing. What kills us early, I'm hearing from you, is stressors. Mm -hmm. and yeah. having a sense of belonging because you have a healthy tribe, you have a healthy family around, you have a healthy faith-based community around, you relieve yourself of that stress, which is usually the, the gatekeeper for all kinds of diseases. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it boils down to, relationships. Yeah. I'm like, how do we how do we foster good relationships uh, so that we can stay stress free and happy? You know. <laughs> want, me, want me jump in? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, foster good relationships. Well, what whenever I go to a new place, one thing I I try to do is I try to connect to a church because the church kind of provides that that area or that platform where I can foster good relationships. Meet I can new meet new people. I can be a part of something other than um, something um, outside of myself, and so, so to speak, whether if it's getting involved in some type of project or some type of program. And then from that, that opens up the door to other avenues where belonging to a faith-based faith, faith community, um, joining the right tribe.
time because from there i'm able to see other options i'm able to connect with other people um so church um or some type of religious organization provides that that foundation that platform yeah or that foundation yes yeah so number one you have to do that and then you have to um basically uh be friendly right hey sister yeah. mitri how are you doing like you have to show yourself friendly you have to show a level of um i believe grace right i think you have to show a level mm -hmm. of uh commitment like i feel like we are human beings and with humanity mm -hmm. there's going to be you know flaws and um um areas of contention uh especially in our churches right <laughs> yeah um but we have to be i think if we really understood that proper connection with family friends and faith-based church communities at large will make you live longer i th i think we would um be very careful to hold uh each other closer yeah right. yeah yeah i think we would be if, if, if we see our co the connection to our long life you know yeah yeah and and then also bias um yes internalizing it but as you said going out and and um and searching for it by being humble by being a helper by being um, a model citizen so to speak yeah then you can then you could be able to reduce your stress mm -hmm. foster that opportunity to be able to be a friend mm -hmm. and 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 that can allow you to um see other options in terms of joining the right tribe belonging to a faith-based community but then also as you are growing you, you could um be close to family and friends yeah. that are older than you yeah and and, and and be there for them yeah get a, get along with your family yeah get along with your family like that's critical like heal 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 relationships with your family um <laughs> It's it, it's it's about that time of the holidays, and many families are are splintered. I wonder how many families know that by being together and happy and together is is directly has a direct effect on their long life. I wonder how many people yeah. know that. You know, I'm not saying force it because some of those people in your family can be predatory, and and if they're predators, yeah. then you don't then you need to get rid of the predators. But Yes, but you you need to understand that a family, church family, a friend family, you know, is yeah. it's still uh, Sister Dimitri says still my favorite person with all your flaws. Appreciate it, Sister Dimitri. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I got a lot of flaws. That's one thing for sure. I I'm not a I'm not the type of person to not deny that. Um, but I have a lot of great great qualities as well, and so. Yeah. Um, and so my, my great qualities outweigh my flaws. I know that for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, mentioned, you mentioned something about get connected with family and that's key because oftentimes this word is very powerful and that is unforgiven. Mm. Unforgiving mm. that contributes to not joining the right tribe and yep. not putting loved ones first, and then that yep. in turn can cause you to die early because yes, life is things that happened in the past, but if you don't forgive, you know I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist, so I, I don't really understand this, this the specifics. But if you don't forgive, then that could weigh you down dramatically. Yeah. Um, and forgiveness doesn't mean that you're saying what they did was okay. Forgiveness is letting what they did go. It's letting Correct. what they yeah. did go and saying, you know what? I love Oprah Winfrey's definition of forgiveness. I don't even wish it to be any different. I don't even wish, like they said, did somebody did something wrong to you. Let's say somebody smacked you and you are still angry about the fact that they smacked you. Forgiveness is saying, you know what? 
I don't even wish they didn't smack me because over time I became a better person in spite of how they smacked me. And, and, and even maybe, um, I learned something about myself as I handle that smack. Like, I'm not going to even wish they didn't smack me. And, um, what you said was so was key. Mr. Dimitri says you can give and still keep keep a distance. Yeah, I mean forgiveness doesn't mean reconciliation. That's Correct. that's yeah. true. Forgiveness that's true. doesn't mean, forgiveness just means you let it go. You let it go. You are at peace with what happened. You are at peace with what happened. Why? Because Ken, you said that's something critical. You said it'll weigh you down. I saw something earlier uh, on Facebook about how you could get angry, but then when you start having unforgiveness, he was holding a heavy child, a child, and then he was holding a heavier child. And then unforgiveness leads to resentment. And then that's a a, a man. It was like a, a young adult man. It was hard to yeah. pick up, but it was still possible. And yeah. then lastly, it ends up in bitterness. And you can't even hold that. It, it'll weigh you down. You don't want to get to the place where your unforgiveness becomes resentment and bitterness it'll it'll weigh you down you'll you'll it'll stress your body and from yeah. the insides of your body you're getting all types of um women for instance they say they have the most prevalent autoimmune diseases c- directly contributed by stressful events you know yeah. so mm-mm, no ma'am no sir forgive let it go don't wish It'd be any different. Let your heart break. You know, I've been watching a lot of uh, videos on, you know, relationships um, and not, not not necessarily relationships, but um, just managing your emotions, sadness, fear and anger. And it's important not to be so unforgiving. Just let your heart break. Yeah. Let it break. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And number one, that's where the church comes in. And number two, like frozen, you gotta let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Release it. Release it from your body. Get everything out of your body. You don't want stressors in your body. You want to live yeah. long. And every yeah. stressor in your body is causing some kind of physical ailment in your body. Let it go. Correct. Yeah. Let, it, let it go. Yeah, I love that. Um, anything else you want to say for me? Uh, just to remind you guys, let me get let me get your your information out there. You're gonna be live tomorrow, I think. Are you gonna be live, live tomorrow, tomorrow talking? Um, on his on his Facebook page. Yeah, la- yeah. I'm, yes, I'm live tomorrow, and the topic is basically, what is your number one goal for next year? I know. I know the, um, hey, the New Year's resolution is coming. Um, Have y'all stopped thinking about it as yet? So I wanna talk briefly about how to create a strong goal to help you achieve what goal you want in relation to lifestyle, health, and wellness. Love it, love it. What time? Um, 12 o'clock West Coast, three o'clock East Coast. Okay, noon, noon. Noon West Coast, three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Always also, if you want to get a free one-on-one consultation with him, you can go to www.thelifeswitchplan.com. Ken, this has been a great quarter. I feel like you've given so much gems for longevity. It's so critical that we understand that we can have all the money in our in the world, but if our health is messed up we will not enjoy it and we won't because either we'll be sickly or we will die early so it is critical that we stay healthy spiritually physically and emotionally healthy yeah 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 health is wealth health is wealth all right guys you have a good night it was fun See ya. Take care. Happy New Year. Yeah. Get that one. (laughs) Yes.